Okay, so in this session, we will be doing some coding about association rule learning. So this notebook shows how to perform association rule learning using the Python library in Python. So um, this allows us to do association rule learning. PyFIM is an extension module that makes several frequent item set mining implementations available as functions in Python 3.10 or later. Um, with that, we could use various um, FIM algorithms such as a priori, FB growth, and others. Don't have to use all of them, but um, know, just know that you have all those functions available here. And how do we use that? First, we have to install the Python library. So we could use the conda install approach or the pip install approach. Since this is a Google Colab, we use the pip install approach. And now we will be um, importing those libraries. So for now, we will be making use of a synthetic data set for um, pedagogical purposes. But um, this is just a very small in real world, of course, you will have like thousands of transactions, but um, we're doing this so you could easily understand the concept. You could quickly check the values if they do make sense. So we're just using the standard um, grocery data set. You have milk, Coke, beer, Pepsi, shoes. Those are the items in our data set. And now we will be making use of various FIM algorithms. So the first one is a priori. Um, for more details, you could just look at the documentation. So just use help with an a priori and you can see all the parameters that you could tweak. There are lots, as you can see, but uh, we're interested in the support here for the frequent item set, okay? So now we set the threshold values. If we want to set the absolute value, then we use negative and then the count. But um, if you want the percentage, then don't use the negative. If you look at the documentation here, that's also what it says. So um, for the support, if it's positive percentage, if it's negative, then it's an absolute number. And the report is AS. What does that mean? So A, um, it will report the absolute item set support number. If it's S, then the relative item set support test fraction. And now we can just um, turn it into a data frame. So we are calling the a priori function and then those up threshold values and the report um, format. And then we just add some labels and then you will now see the item sets. So since the support threshold value that we have set is three, then all the item sets that you'll be seeing here are three and above. So they're frequent item sets. We've also printed out the relative value of the support because we added S. You could also use FB growth. It's the same output. They're just um, different algorithms for doing the same thing. Although um, for bigger data sets, FB growth would be um, suggested to use. So it's the same output, just different ordering, but it's the same, same values here. So now how do we find the significant item sets? Um, so we're also now including the confidence. So you could add other metrics if you want, you could just play around with the values. But for now, we will also be adding confidence on top of the minimum support threshold value. So for that, we will be using the A rules function. And again, there's uh, the documentation for that. Now uh, we will be using the same um, support threshold value. But now uh, we will also be adding the confidence. So we want the minimum confidence to be 50%. The default is 80%. I just want to make it 50% here. And the report would be DXE. So what do they stand for? D is the absolute body slash antecedent item set support number. X is the relative body slash antecedent item set support test fraction. And C again is the uh, rule confidence as a percentage. So what is um, body antecedent and um, 
head on consequent here, because you will be seeing it later. So the um, antecedent is the if, the consequent is the then. So again, we print it out and you will see the different values here. So how do you read this? So it's like, um, if uh, beer is the antecedent, then that means if I buy beer, then I will buy milk. And this is the count here. This count here is just for the body or antecedent because that's what we used here in the report, BXC. The support is um, 0.75. So um, that's like a high value. And then for the confidence, it's also high. So you're getting 66%. So if I buy beer, then 66% um, of the time, um, the other um, people are buying milk. So that's the idea here. For the blank ones, um, this is really just uh, the number of times customer bought a beer over the total population. Okay, so that's it. As you can see here, all the values here are above the threshold values that we have set. So the threshold values are three for the support and the confidence is 50. If you change this, then of course you'll end up with different values. For example, if I make it four, um, so the antecedent should be four. So juice is, well, There's there are lots of um, antecedents here that have a value of four. So Coke beer, milk beer, juice, juice, Coke beer, juice. If you look in the frequent item set output, well, those are the same um, values. Let's also change the support here, for example, if we make it four. You will be seeing those items as well. So those are the frequent item sets. You're only getting the um, confidence of those that are frequent item sets. So there's beer, Coke, milk, juice, Coke, um, Coke, beer, milk, beer. If you look at the antecedents here, those are the same values that you'll be seeing. And then we just look at the confidence of the other items. If we bought those um, item sets for the antecedents, now for the exercise, um, I want you to find the interesting items in this data set. Feel free to use any threshold value. Um, please look at the definition of interest in our lecture session. And uh, what would you recommend the owner of a grocery store given these association rules? That's it. Thank you.